Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Uh, to memory, I don't think that I've done this before, but I figured, why not start? Basically what I'm doing is revisiting a couple of fragrances that I've reviewed in the past. So these are fragrances that I've done a full-on review video of. Now I'm revisiting them much later down the line to let you guys know if anything has changed since I did that initial review. After I've been able to wear them much longer, uh, have I found more situations that they work in? Have I decided that some of the things I said earlier were too harsh or too lenient or whatever? You already know this by the title, but the fragrances that I'm taking a look at today and revisiting are Mont Blanc Explorer right here and Isimiyaki Lo Major DC. So let's go ahead and jump into this and check out these two fragrances once again. Since I've reviewed these in the past, I'm not going to be doing a full-on presentation part of the video. I'm just going to jump right into it, tell you guys how these smell to me and how I view them now versus how I viewed them before. First off, let's talk about this one, Mont Blanc Explorer. So most of you guys are going to be aware of this one as a designer Aventus clone or a designer fragrance that's inspired by Aventus. There are so many different Aventus clones at this point that when Explorer was released, it was not super well received by the fragrance community, you could say. A lot of people just immediately wrote this one off because of that similarity to Aventus. And when you look at Explorer, I mean, it does look like sort of an Aventus inspired kind of bottle. Just talking about the color scheme and how Aventus uses this kind of black wrap around, and then Explorer has this leather wrap around. Obviously, they don't look the same, but you could definitely say that this one is inspired by this one a little bit. So when Explorer first came out, I said that I liked the fragrance, but I didn't love it, and I suggested waiting until it hit retailers. I said it's not worth retail price, basically. Explorer does open up with an Aventus type vibe. It doesn't have pineapple, so it's not gonna give you a pineapple opening like lots of batches of Creed Aventus will, but it does open up with a lot of bergamot. And that's actually something that a lot of different clones will do, or inspired by fragrances will do, is a big bergamot opening instead of the pineapple. And in the opening, Explorer with that bergamot smells good. It does, it's definitely appealing, highly people pleasing, and very versatile. There's also a decent amount of pink pepper and ambroxan. And the ambroxan is noticeable basically right away. Now it's not a super powerful, super impactful, loud ambroxan like you might find in some other designer blue fragrances, but it's still there and it's still noticeable. The ambroxan here is sparkly, it's fresh, and it gives Explorer a little bit of an effervescent kind of feeling in the opening with that bergamot. And there's also this little touch of warmth that that Ambroxan adds to Explorer as well. Like I said, in the opening, super pleasant. Really, the only thing that I can knock in the opening is that it does have that Aventus vibe. It doesn't smell the same as Aventus, but you can tell that they were inspired by it. You'll see some people say that Explorer smells like Sauvage and Aventus mixed together a little bit. I don't get that too much. Sauvage smells completely different than Explorer to me. Though as it dries down, Explorer does pick up kind of a peppery feeling to it. And Sauvage also has uh, a good amount of pepper in it as well, though they smell different. In Explorer, that peppery feeling is most likely coming from Akigala wood, which is a synthetic where you take patchouli, basically clean it up, remove the earthiness from it, and then it comes across peppery and woodier. Akigala wood smells pretty similar to clear wood. It just comes from a different company. So anyway, as Explorer starts to dry down, that bergamot fades away, the juiciness of the bergamot fades away, though you still do have some of that residual sweetness from it in the mid. And at that point, it becomes centered more on the Ambroxan and the Akigala wood. In the mid, those are the two most prominent notes to me. You do have a little bit of supporting vetiver and leather, and as it dries down, you pick up some patchouli as well, but still, Akigala wood, Ambroxan, those are the main things. In the dry down, that patchouli comes across more as a clean patchouli there's just a tiny touch of earthiness. It's uh, not really dirty though. It's not a dank patchouli note. And Explorer starts shading into a fresh, woody, aromatic sort of fragrance. Cacao or chocolate is listed as a base note, but I don't pick any of that up at all. I don't pick up any cocoa 
Now, does Explorer smell exactly like Aventus at any point? To me, no, they're definitely two separate fragrances. But like I said at the beginning, is it inspired by Aventus? And is it pretty obvious that it's inspired by Aventus? Yeah, yeah it is, especially in the opening. Does it smell as natural as Aventus? Absolutely not, no. And they're not trying to hide that, you know? Mont Blanc isn't out here trying to say, look at Explorer, this extremely natural smelling fragrance. That's not what they're going for at all. The Ambroxan is noticeable right away, right in the opening, but this is a really pleasant fragrance. There's no way around that, at least in my opinion. Essentially, Explorer is a designer take on Aventus where they've taken that DNA, freshened it up, and injected some Ambroxan in there. And it's possible that when I first reviewed this, I was a little bit too hard on it. Now, I'm not gonna tell you guys that I love the fragrance, but it has grown on me more over time. It's really versatile. You could use it almost year round. You could use it day or night. You can wear it to the office. You can wear it casually. You can wear it on a date. You can do a lot of stuff with this fragrance and it's gonna pull almost any of those situations off without problems. And you could also pull this off formally. I know that a lot of times when people wear a formal fragrance, they like to go with something that's either a true classic gentlemanly fragrance or something that's got a lot of richness to it. But I think that this could work just as well in a formal situation, much like Aventus. And that's gonna be mainly because it is so appealing to the majority of people out there and it doesn't have that bubblegummy type sweetness that can come across a little bit immature. And since you can pick this up at discounted prices now, about 40 to $42 US for this size bottle, two ounces, I think it's worth the pickup. Now obviously some people are gonna disagree with that and if you don't want an Aventus style fragrance, then you can just pass it by. That being said, this is not a direct Aventus clone. It does its own thing, it's just inspired by Aventus, especially again in the opening with that bergamot, the way it comes across. Just looking at the bottle, you can tell they invested more in this fragrance than most of the other releases that they've done. I mean, the bottle here is substantially nicer looking than what you'll find in the Legend line, for example. So here's Legend Spirit, here's Explorer. Holding them in your hand, you can tell that Explorer is just better made. Again, just talking about the bottle here. The Legend fragrances can be a pretty good bang for your buck line. I mean, a lot of these are versatile, compliment getting, easy to wear kind of fragrances, though they do tend to shade more toward the younger side of things. Holding these in your hand though, this is a two ounce bottle, this is a 100 milliliter bottle. This one is heavier and it's pretty obvious. Just the thick glass, the heavier metal cap, the attention to detail with the Mont Blanc symbol on the atomizer around the neck of the bottle here. It's just a higher quality presentation through and through. And here is Mont Blanc emblem. Again, just kind of as a side by side. Some people will think this is cool just because of the shape of the bottle. But again, if you have these sitting on your shelf, this one looks substantially higher quality, higher class than this one. So you can tell just by looking at it that they've invested a lot in here and it does show. So I'm gonna let you guys know that over the months, this has grown on me more and I think higher of this fragrance now than when I first reviewed it. I mean, it does what you want a designer of fragrance to do for the most part. People are going to like it, it's versatile, it lasts for a good amount of time and it just smells good. Sure, you can get caught up on synthetic this or synthetic that, but at the end of the day, your average person doesn't give an F about that. Now let's talk about this one, Lo Major DC by Isi Miyake. I did not like this a whole bunch when I reviewed this initially. And what's funny is I just talked about synthetics and how your average person does not care. This one takes that synthetic feeling and ramps it up. This one opens up with a, a sort of sharp citrus. It's actually grapefruit and bergamot, but it just comes across very sharp to me and not really all that pleasant. And there's also a soapy green kind of C note initially. There's a dose of saltiness in Lo Major DC, which is going to be coming from that C note. And I've got to let you guys know that initially, this one is very, very synthetic, but not synthetic in a way like, oh, it's a nice, pleasant Ambroxan or something like that. This is synthetic in a sharp, screechy kind of way to me. The mint in the opening lends a little bit of sweetness, but the mint here is not that type of note where I can pinpoint it and say, oh yeah, that's a nice fresh spearmint or that's a fresh peppermint. It just smells like kind of a generic green sweetness to me. As well in the opening, behind that C note, there's this kind of sour feeling that I get. I'm not sure exactly what note is causing that, but there's this little bit of 
sourness there. It's just this little pungent hit, and uh, it could be the tea, I'm not sure. Tea is listed as a note. That sour feeling doesn't come across like tea to me, uh, but it's possible that's what's causing it. And in the opening, I'm not using this as a diss here, but Lo Major DC does not smell like anything natural. It smells completely 100% synthetic. There's not something you can pick out and be like, oh, well, there's a, a natural smelling citrus or a natural smelling woody note. It's just all synthetic in the open. As it dries down, it does get better smelling to me. Uh, the opening to me is not very appealing. It just doesn't smell nice. That sharpness with a little bit of sourness in there and the salty C notes, it, it doesn't work for me, the opening. As you head through the mid, it becomes uh, a transparent woody fragrance. That's how it's been described a number of times and that's a pretty good way to describe it. It's like this transparent synthetic woodiness. There are a lot of different woody notes going on here. There's Gayak wood, there's cashmere wood, there's amber wood, and it actually gives the fragrance kind of a, a fuzzy, effervescent kind of feeling to it. At no point in Lo Major DC's lifespan does this fragrance come across like having natural woods. You can never pick something out and go, oh yeah, that's cedar. Or pick something out and go, oh yeah, that's a creamy sandalwood. There's none of that going on here. That being said, through the mid, it does have a really pleasing kind of sweetness to it and all of those synthetic woods meld together again to give it kind of a an effervescent feeling to it which is pleasing and to dry down i can actually pick that t note up underneath all the woody notes that i talked about before that being said if you did not tell me there was a t note i would not be able to identify it as t but knowing that there's a t note in here if i search it out i can find it and as it dries down this one gets warmer as well, it becomes a semi-sweet synthetic woodsy scent. It does come across simple, but it smells pleasant. That being said, as I mentioned before, the opening is not good. It doesn't smell pleasant, it doesn't smell nice. I don't like it, my wife doesn't like it. I think that it's kind of a failure in the opening. And even with it being pleasant in the mid and the dry down, it's definitely nothing groundbreaking. Like I said, it's essentially a, a semi-sweet synthetic woodsy fragrance. It's fresh. It's effervescent, it's pleasant, but is it anything groundbreaking, anything awesome or great? No, it's not. I also think that Low Super Major DC, which is kind of a, a goofy name, but Low Super Major DC is better than Low Major DC. So that's this one, Low Super Major DC, the flanker to Low Major DC. This one basically takes the DNA of this one and improves upon it. And if you don't have either one of these and you're interested in buying one, just buy Low Super Major DC and skip Low Major DC. You're not gonna be really missing anything. So again, no real reason to pick this one up when you can pay a couple bucks more and get something that's better all the way around while retaining the same DNA. To an extent, Low Major DC kind of falls in line with the Bulgari Aqua line in terms of what it's trying to accomplish, only this one has more of a focus on those synthetic fresh woods. For me, overall, Lo Major DC, do I really like it? Not a whole lot. I would say I respect it slightly more than when I did the original review, but I still don't recommend you buy it. And if you're interested in this one, just buy this one because this one is better and this one is actually a decent fragrance the whole way through. The opening of Lo Major DC frankly sucks. And then the mid and dry down, as I've said a, a number of times, is a basic, simple, uh, synthetic sweet woodsy fragrance. Nothing amazing here. Skip it. Go with this one. So there we go. Two fragrances revisited. Explorer, Lo Major DC. If you have smelled these two fragrances, let me know below what you think about them. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.